Hey, what's up guys, I'm Vincent. Today, I'm going to show you how to abuse your stack wall pass. All right, here we go. So I have talked about the stack wall pass in different videos before. However, have you ever think of why you should abuse your stack wall pass instead of the lane pass? Now, I'm going to discuss this with you. First of all, let's take a look on the catching perspective. As you know that whenever you do the wall pass, you always have your three bar stuck onto the wall. However, with the lane pass, you have to move your three bar out to this area to catch your pass. So in theory, it, it is much easier to catch your wall pass instead of your, of your lane pass. because you always have the wall to assist your catching. Now, on the passing perspective, whenever you do the stack wall pass, you always have to pull your five rod all the way to the wall so that the bumper hit the wall. This is actually a very good indicator to do the passing. You always bring your five rod to the wall to do the pass. On the other hand, for the lane pass, Sometimes you, you are going to mis-execute because you do not really have any indicator on the table and most likely that you need to pay more effort to do the lane pass. Now, based on the catching and passing perspective, it is much easier to execute the wall pass instead of the lane pass. And that's why it is better to abuse your stack wall pass. Now, it sounds that it's very easy to do the stack wall pass. This is true. However, have you ever think of how deep you can go with your stack wall pass? Now, let's take a look on this situation. When you place a ball under the first guy of your five bar, it is still considered a wall pass. However, if you place the ball right next to the wall, now you can still do the wall pass on this position. In other words, it is always better to bring the ball all the way to the wall to this spot to do the pass and this is how deep you can go with your stick wall pass. Now, it is strange that you can do the pass on this spot. Now, let me explain the reason behind. So, let's say the ball is right next to the wall. On this spot, you can see the first guy of your 5 bar do not really cover the whole area of the ball. However, because you are hitting the ball on this spot, you are hitting on this spot, now you are creating some spin on the ball so that it spins clockwise and because of the spin, you are going to make sure the ball do not move away from its strategy to do the pass. Now, you can see the ball travels straight to this spot to do the catch. Now, to see how deep you can go with your stack wall pass, you can actually use these bearings as a tool for practice. Now, let's take a look on this bearing. Where you can find it? You can find it easier from any of your rods on the table, or you can use your spare pass as a practice tool. Now, on this bearing, there are two parts. This part is thicker than this part, However, let's take a look on the thinnest part first. What you want to do, you want to place this part in between the bumper and the wall, like this. Now, you can actually check with the ball. It, it is still available to pass through the wall. Now, let's try it. You see, you, you are still able to pass through this gap to do the wall pass. However, in a real match, it is very difficult to pass through this gap. So that's why I would recommend you to practice with the whole thickness of this bearing. Now, just like before, you want to play this part in between the wall and the bumper. Now, this is the rift that you want to practice. So we set up for the stack wall pass, 
and you try to practice by passing through this gap. And again. So if it falls off, you can still put it back to the position to continue your training. And again. Now, if that was not challenging, you can use this pass to do the practice. Now, this is actually very difficult. And let's try it. Thanks for watching this episode. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and I will see you again next time.